guys, Jennifer Johnson from the Atlantic School of Reflexology. I'm working on a client today who has hip problems and she finds it difficult to stand up straight when she first gets out of a chair and has pain reading down the front of kind of the pelvic area down onto the leg. Um, and so I've already done the whole session. What I want to show you now is a treatment plan and how you might rework reflexes specific to this problem. So I'm going to show the spine in a different video, but I would rework the spine, especially any areas of the spine for low back that supply nerves to the hip area and to the leg. And at this point now, I'm going to work on the leg from the side of the foot, as well as the lateral hip reflex. Probably there's going to be some spots in through here that are more tender than others, so I'll need to communicate with my client. I'll work the medial hip around the medial ankle or malleolus. Uh, so let's get started on that and we'll find where the tender areas are. What I want you to know when you're working for reflexes that you're reworking is you don't have to just repeat what you did in the session. So if inside the session you did like caterpillar in the hip and leg triangle, you don't have to stay, just go back and do the exact same thing. You can isolate things and work, way, work your way down. You can do a pressure glide, you can do circular rotations. Here I'm doing a little bit of a pressure glide and I'm working towards groin lymph or towards that lateral hip reflex. And now I'm working right into that little hollow space where the foot meets the leg, so right into that ankle joint itself. And this is the front part of the lateral hip reflex. It's also uh, the sciatic reflex. So can you tell me if there's a tender spot in through here when I'm working? Right there. Okay, and I'm slowing it down. Yeah. Okay, and we found a spot. And so now I'm just going to kind of hover here. I can hook it and I can stay here. I'm making sure I have a lot of support with my grip, so I have a pressure and a counter pressure, a comfortable grip. I'm anchored with my reflex working hand and I'm doing sustained pressure and slightly rocking. And anyone who takes advanced reflexology, or even if you haven't, you may feel slight automatic movements that the body's doing, those little self-corrections, so I can feel that that release. So that's a bit more of an advanced technique, but it does tell me when I can move on. Or you could just count out a number of seconds and then move right on. There. So I'm going to hang out here for a little while and keep working in this lateral hip reflex. It's also the groin area and in particular in front of it and we have these little areas that are tender. I'm watching my client for reactions. I'm watching for tightening fists or facial expressions or for the leg or lower body tightening against the table because I'm pretty sure this is tender work. Am I correct? Okay. Alrighty. Manageable? Yeah. okay with that and you can still yeah. breathe I'm still watching the abdomen rise and fall yeah. so as I'm moving off of that one for the hip I'm going around to the lateral part of the back sorry posterior part of the hip and that one goes a little bit up the leg and it's just tucked right against the the outside bone of the leg okay so I'm doing another glide and I think we're probably hitting some pressure spots right around there is that yeah what are you feeling there right there okay so these ones are kind of easy to miss, so it's really important to feel them out and find them. I'm going to keep going back and doing a glide with some depth. My client is still relaxed. She's yielding. Her feet are relaxed. She's breathing. And these deep parts, these don't last forever. These are the rework, which normally means those are the reflexes for body parts that are affected. They probably are imbalanced and so they probably are going to be tender. So this working relationship back and forth where my client knows that I'll ease up if I if she wants me to. Um, that's the kind of trust and relationship and rapport and communication we have to have. I'm moving on to the hip from the side of the foot. It's kind of a smaller reflex that's in the cuboid fossa or just a spongy little area under the bone on the side of the foot. And when I'm pressing in here, I'm gliding down until I kind of fall into the deepest spot. And here I'm gonna also just do like a deep pressure glide very specifically to one little spot feel that okay and there's tenderness in there and just comparatively I'm going to show you if I start up near here's the fifth metatarsal this little bone on the side if I start up here here's comparatively what it feels like up top and as I sink to the depths of that it, when I can really kind of sink in there that's where yeah. you start to feel it right so I need to work with you find out where it's tender but also get myself in the right position so once we work that a few times I could introduce another ankle loosener I can do inversion and eversion, right? This little foot warmer, because all of that, any movement around the ankle that frees this space in the ankle, that's also gonna free any restricted energy in that groin and hip area. So if I come to the medial hip then, I'm just gonna work around the, oh, 
I'll go lighter there. I jumped in a little bit too much pressure without checking the sensitivity. There's a don't do. So now that we're on it, I know where it's tender. I did lighten up because my client had a jump response. How are we there with that amount of pressure? Good. Okay. And I'm just working on the inside of the foot or the medial aspect. And I'm working under the ankle bone. That's medial hip. Uh, otherwise referred to as SI joints. Okay, it's where the sacrum meets the hip. Okay, and here's where another little jump response. I can do a sustained hold. I can just hold that. It's called static contact or sustained pressure. And I can just hold it there. So what I want you to really take from this, especially if you practice reflexology or if you're a student of reflexology, is that I don't have to just reproduce things that I did in the routine. I'm really now specifying this to my exact client's reflexes in her body. Uh, we're gonna track her symptoms between sessions and see what changes. I can alter my techniques from hook, caterpillar, circular rotation. I can introduce more glide. I can introduce static contact or pressure holds. We can vary our pressure back and forth. And from here, I wouldn't do a treatment on the hip without addressing the spine, but I wanna do that in a different video. So just remember that the spine, especially for the low back, we really wanna work that with anything that has to do with hip or pelvis so that we especially address uh, any irregularities of the spine that might be affecting the hip, but also the peripheral nerves that supply the hip, okay? And especially uh, sciatic nerve, because a lot of the sciatic nerve is made from nerves that exit from the lower spine. So I would work in here, but medial hip, lateral hip, what we also know is the sciatic reflex is stopping and working specifically on any points that are calling for more attention by being more tender, hip and leg triangle on the side, lots of glide, lots of attention, and that's what we do for the, the body part uh, addressing for the reflexes. We could also do inflammation points and pain relieving points. We'll do those in another video.